This is 61 Minutes with Ben Osborne and Tyler Horner. Today we will be talking to John Humphrey Noyes, the creator of the Oneida community. Noyes was born in 1811. His eccentric views which has drawn criticism from rationalists. In 1834, he experienced his second conversion, which would turn his life towards creating the Oneida community, his own utopia. Noyes established a well-known complex marriage system in 1846, but these beliefs are controversial to say the least. He is also a renowned author, creating famous pieces of literature such as the Bible Communism, Extreme Socialism, and Childbirth. Amidst the controversy stirring up from his community, he sat down with us to discuss the community's goals and respond to the questions concerning his rationality. So John, what type of early education experiences have you had? Well, I've been to many colleges, such as Dartmouth, Andover, and Yale. Now, Mr. Noyes, what was your criticism on America? I believe that God did not intend that love between men and women be confined to a narrow channel of conventional matrimony. Now, can you please explain to our viewers what that means? Ha 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 ha! In layman's terms, I don't believe in marriage. Can you please explain to us your methods on improving America? My product was the United Community. I created group marriage to remove jealousy. This would lead to equality of the sexes. Mr. Humphrey, do you believe that you were successful in your reform? <laughs> what are you, Hitler or something? I made the most successful utopian society in America, and that will never be taken away from me. Do you think your name is going to go down in history? My beliefs are extremely radical, but I believe that future generations will look back on them and realize how successful I was. Not to be disrespectful, but if you feel that way, why do so many people find your goals impractical? Idealists believe I overestimated the ability of people to reform to the extent of my ideas. The world is too big to change all religions, and people will always be competitive and jealous. So Mr. Noyes, this is all the questions I have for you today. So now I'm going to hand the show over to my associate, Tyler. What activities did you have in the Oneida community? Well, we had football! Lacrosse. There's time for play and there's time for work. But people in the Oneida community love doing work. How did such beautiful buildings like this one get built? Well, people in the Oneida community even enjoy hard labor. Like that? Like this. Where does your food supply come from? We supply our own foods and gardens like these. Do you think you can clarify your stance on marriage for me? Well, every man is married to every woman, and every woman is married to every man. If different women were allowed to have intercourse with every man, how did you prevent an overabundance of offspring? Great question. I created my own contraceptive that disallowed men to ejaculate during intercourse. <sighs> Go directly to jail? Don't collect money when you pass go? That's right where John Humphrey Norris would have been headed if he hadn't escaped to Canada. Hi, I'm Andy Rooney, and I'd like to talk to you about John Humphrey Norris. Here's some things you probably didn't know. In 1846, Norris was arrested for adultery. This is the reason he started his Oneida community, because he believed that free love shouldn't be confined by the government. He was only 23 when he established his beliefs. The young generation should be inspired by this. I mean, look at the long-standing effect he had on our society. His beliefs on professionalism included gender equality, which boosted the women's rights movement. It also included free love, something we all know influenced the hippie movement in the 1960s. That's our show for today. We'll see you next week. Up next is a documentary on Charlie Sheen. Good night, everybody.